Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Token Metrics Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you need a roadmap in crypto, if you're wrecked or you need help, subscribe to this channel. If you like the content, hit the like button. For the best research in business, visit tokenmetrics.com. And the sponsor of this show is tokenmetrics.com. All right. Today, this is why we have the market update. We have it so that we can bring everything to you right when you need it, particularly in tough times. So let me, let me take a moment. We're going to do this kind of slow so we can give people time to join. Um, so Omar first on the stream, Drew X needs a big hug. I'm here for you. Okay. Ryan, Daria, Aiken, Gary from Australia up late. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Is this the bottom? I'll get to that. Black Monday, Joseph. Like the way you're thinking, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. All right. Strictly wants to buy the dip. Drew X is here. Flip burger, Joseph. Get bags ready. We've got Slovakia in the house. Tampa Bay, welcome. Okay, so we got Houston, Georgia. I know my friends from the UK are out there. You got it in the house. Is this going to be a painful year? Probably. I thought we would see this price action in March, and we're seeing it now. I will try to look at Harmony. I'm going to do my best. Uh, computer hardware is here. New computer hardware, not installed yet, but I will be able to do like rapid fire requests, hopefully. Uh, and I'm going to try to take as many requests as I can. So Jay says, interestingly, crypto is in lockstep with NASDAQ and the S&P. When these, when these two are completed, the correction, then crypto will, Okay. So crypto and equities are together. What happened to those Cowboys? Well, I don't know, but I switched to my favorite hockey team, the New York Rangers. Welcoming Maryland in the US, England, Morocco. The Warpler says, I'm not selling. All right. Well, then you definitely want to check out a video which I got no love for. It was called How to Hedge Against a Crash talking about equity market instruments and possibly gold and silver. It was like the lowest ranking market update ever. I was like, what? Okay. So we've got London, California. Okay. Somebody wants Dopex. I will try to get to that. I know somebody was here yesterday who was a customer. Somebody's asking why DYDX is doing well along with PERP. That's a good question. Okay. Derivatives exchanges, FTX was rallying before this mess, right? DYDX and PERP, because they could experience huge volumes as people rush in, particularly institutions, to hedge or, or, or short sellers want to take advantage of decentralized derivatives exchanges, right? So I don't recommend it as an American, obviously, but you know, if you have a VPN or if you need to get short, to protect your holdings, that's where you go do it. All right. So we've got Ireland, Mexico in the house. All right. The UK is here and we've already got 100 messages. So Fort Payne has checked in. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to the market update. Feel free to keep telling us where you're from throughout the stream so I can give you a shout out. All right. I want to go through the market update. I want to get a little bit conversational. So let's go, let's, let's share the screen. 
All right. And let's talk about the fear of being short. Bear markets like bull markets for long-term viewers of this content, they have stages, right? Like bull markets will shake you out, you know, stop you out and then go up. And some of the corrections will be little and some of the corrections will be huge, but they never let you in. Now in bear markets, as I have told you, everyone loses money. It's just like impossible, right? Bears sh get short two days ago. The market rips up, stops everyone out. A couple days ago, I talked about beware of failed rallies. I thought maybe the short covering rally would last, I don't know, I said one day to one month. It was more like one minute to three hours, right? Just to tell you how much bear markets can F people, even if you know it's a bear market. Okay, so let's talk about what's happened lately. The market went down and everyone was like, oh no, I got to sell. And then they got caught and it rallied, <laughs> okay? Then what happened? It failed. It went down and now, because everyone just got squeezed out a day ago, everyone goes, oh, I can't get short down here. I can't sell down here. I don't want to sell. I don't want to sell. I got stopped out Rune. I got stopped out, you know, uh, Sushi. I don't want to sell. No one wants to sell. And people don't want to be short because like, oh, I missed it. And if I short it, it's going to rip up in my face. So bear markets feed on the fear of being short. They go, the market goes down. The market goes down, right? Until people are no longer afraid to be short. And when that fear of being short disappears, that's when you get these monstrous bear market rallies. So that's a brief overview of how bear markets work. So bringing it back to where we are, we're at the fear of being short phase. No one wants to be short crypto here. No one. No one. All right. The problem with crypto isn't crypto. It's equities and risk assets. So let's go into that. Now, this is going to be a little bit more about legacy than we're normally doing. China yesterday cut interest rates. Normally, when a country that big cuts interest rates, markets would rally. Okay, that's why it was like one day to one month. All right, markets rallied for about three hours. The last time I saw a market do a failed rally on a rate cut was December of 2007. Okay, that was one month before the start of the great financial crisis that lasted 18 months. Specifically, the Fed cut rates in December, right? No one really thought they would, but they only did 25 basis points. They were looking for a 50 basis point cut, or at least that's what they were hoping for. So they do this rate cut, and I remember us all sitting around going, wow, they... They did another rate cut because they had done a couple before that. They're like, oh my God, something really must be wrong. And everybody was selling. All the smart money was like, GTFO, get me out of this market. So when you have a failed rally off of a rate cut, bad. Now that said, what could turn this market around? Okay. So before I go through the whole legacy train wreck, what could stop this market from going down? The only thing that's going to stop the legacy markets from going lower is the Fed coming out on the tape and saying, everyone calm down. We want to fight inflation. We don't want to destroy capital markets. And most likely, the reason stocks are up as of this recording is because everyone is afraid that the Fed is going to come in and save them like they always do. And no one wants to be short down here. Okay. But historically, a failed rally off a rate cut means rates got cut because there's a problem with the Chinese property market, whatever. There's a big problem out there that we don't fully understand yet. And that's what's toxic, right? So if you got to, if you're sitting there going, God, what is going on with crypto? It's because of what's going on in legacy. Now, just to enhance the picture, the failed rally off the rate cut is in the top left. And that is what S&P did on the great financial crisis. 
So if you've ever heard the term everything bubble, if the everything bubble pops in S&P, that's what it looks like. It took a year. This isn't going to take a year, okay? Which brings me to this idea of Black Monday. I didn't put the charts up, but this reminds me of 1987. I was in college and I studied this a lot. I used to actually work for a company called markethistory.com. It's no longer around, but I learned that in 1987, interest rates in the US and fear of Fed tightening drove bond yields up far enough that it cracked equities. And a five-year bull market collapsed when equities went down 25% in one day. That was after dropping about 15% before the crash. So there is no doubt in my mind that two things will happen this weekend. One, legacy traders will be afraid to be short because they think the Fed could come in and save them. Two, if the Fed doesn't come in and save them, the legacy press will be filled with this is going to be a Black Monday repeat. So I'm telling you first so you can get ready if that's the case. Now, let's talk about why this could be a repeat of Black Monday. Okay. The orange line is the 100 day moving average. The S&P has been above the 100-day moving average since the start of the pandemic. So every time it's touched it in October 2020 and October of last year, it comes back. Okay, this time it looks like a real serious break. There might be a return move higher, which would be a chance to adjust portfolios in crypto. But the fact of the matter is, you know, any way you really look at equities, they're starting to break down. And this bubble is so big, right? It's so big that there's almost like only a handful of equities that are still up while the whole rest of the market is down. Okay, for our friends in Europe, stocks 600. This is the S&P 500-ish of Europe, okay? Now, this is actually traded fairly well. There's a lot of German companies in here. The UK stock indexes, which are not shown here, they have a lot of oil companies in them. So they have actually held up well. But folks, you got to think about this for a second. If you're in Europe, do you want to take risks with European equities? Okay. And if you don't, where's your money going to go? Into government debt that has either a zero or a negative yield? Or is that money going to flow back into the United States, into the dollar possibly into the 10-year, we wish into DeFi. But the bottom line is, there's a lot of risks for stocks in Europe that I don't think that's been fully like, fully priced in yet. Yeah, I know the ECB is not going to raise rates like the Fed, but still, right? When people think they're safe in a bear market, they're not. They're not. Okay, now let's go to the very, very busy Elliott Wave chart of an intraday picture for the S&P 500 futures contract. That's ES1 in your trading view. So what happened? Let's tell the story of the bear market, right? So S&P starts out in the top left in January at its all-time high. S&P goes down. Everyone's like, don't worry about it. It bounces. Everyone goes, I told you so. Don't worry about it. Then S&P goes down. Everyone says, oh no, wait, is there a problem? There are two deadly failed rallies. And then we had the collapse we did yesterday and this morning. Okay. That type of price action implies that if there is a down move in equities, it will be a wave three, right? So it's like down, correct. That's the two wave. And then the big trend with the big gratification is the three wave. So I am not the only person who can draw this, and I am not the only person who will be talking about wave three inequities. So if there is no Fed saving event and equities are left to their own devices, it's probably 10 to 15% inequities. Now in crypto, that's like, a, I don't know, that's like an average Monday through Wednesday. Oh yeah, 15%, whatever. Okay, but in equities, that's the apocalypse. That's probably 35K Bitcoin if equities go down that much. All right. 
So just be aware that Black Monday is going to be all over the all over the news this weekend for good reason. Now, just a reminder, ARK Innovation, the altcoins of the stock market. Thought that there would be a bigger bounce yesterday. There wasn't. Okay. This is the bowling ball thrown out of a window formation. Okay. Uh, 80 was a chart point in this ETF. This ETF holds a lot of speculative equities. 62, 62 is the next level. Just as a reminder, this, this rally and this thing started at 32 back in March of 2020. Okay, Dean loves being tethered up right now. Stops saved my sanity. Okay, uh, Mickey House is having a tough time. Mickey, stay with us. We're going to help you as much as we can. And Skylab 2000 is talking about energy stocks. Yes, oil is up. And that's funny you bring that up. Because one of the reasons why I don't think the Fed can come in and save everybody is if they save equities, they're going to send commodities rocketing higher. Okay, West Texas crude, U.S. crude oil is at like $85 a barrel. All right, so altcoins of the equity market in big trouble. All right. 10-year note yield. So interest rates go up, the Fed hikes rates. You know, long-term U.S. rates should go up, right? Well, yeah, they did. But then as soon as this stock market started falling apart, everybody in legacy flocked in to park their money in a 10-year note that gives them 1.4% or 1.7%. You're know, like, 1.7%? I'm in DeFi at 20%. And I know. But in legacy, 1.4% is better than negative, and it's a lot better than losing 10 to 15% in stocks. So guess what? Long-term interest rates went up, and then the 10-year note came actually back down to close right around its 200-week moving average. So if everyone's trying to like buy U.S. bonds and get away from the fear, that smells a lot like 87, right? You know, bond yields went up, and then everyone was like, oh, my God, you know, I got to buy bonds. My mentor was actually the two-year note trader from Merrill Lynch, and he said, I knew equities were going to crash. I knew I was supposed to get some two-year notes, but they were going down so much because rates were going up so hard, I couldn't hold the trade. I knew it was going to happen, and I couldn't hold the trade. This was the same thing on a, on a slightly smaller scale. All right. Now, if that made no sense, don't worry. Crypto's coming up in a minute. In the meantime, I had discussed in the <laughs> least like YouTube video I've ever done, called How to Hedge Against a Crash, I brought up SQQQ. This is not investment advice. Leverage ETFs can be dangerous with hidden options, with embedded options and hidden fees. But, you know, if you have to protect yourself and you're worried about a crash on Monday, you know, SQQQ, like everybody was buying it yesterday, but say no one seems interested today. It ran up and came off. <laughs> Interesting, right? Everyone's afraid of being short. All right. Now, for token metric subscribers, all right, our all exchange daily index has gone to cash and it was actually all in cash yesterday. So, for subscribers of token metrics, you know, this was there yesterday, right? I can't give everything away on the air. I got to save stuff for our subscribers. But the bottom line is one of our indices went to all cash yesterday, basically. Okay, this is what it looks like today. All right. I'm coming in choppy. A am, I, am I coming in choppy? Can you still hear me? All right. It looks like I'm okay. So let's move to crypto. Total crypto market cap weekly. All right. Now, crypto market cap bottom in September, right at this level at $1.8 as you can see, crypto at the time this chart was produced is sitting right at that level. So on one hand, it's not a disaster right now, okay? On the other hand, if crypto breaks down on Mondays because equities break down, there's $500 billion that could disappear from total crypto market cap because that's where, that's where it was back in July. I mean, it was down there for like two months. 
So I'm looking at this like, oh my God, you know, crypto's down like 5% today. Oh, okay. I mean, that's, that, that's not good, but for crypto, it's not terrible, right? So if you got to make adjustments, if you're wrecked, right? Okay. Thank you for the sound check, Megan. Appreciate that. If you're wrecked and you got to make adjustments to positions, okay, with the market being only down about 5 to 10% in crypto, you may need to make the adjustments because, I mean, it could recover. Jay Powell could save us or not because if no one wants to be short and no one adjusts their positions, what is going to be going on in your head and your portfolio if $500 billion disappears from total crypto market cap? Let's take a moment and let that sink in. All right. Now, let's look at Bitcoin. All right. Slightly less dramatic of a picture. Um, the failure at 43K, uh, if you were on my Twitter, I actually did the hand-drawn scan work on this. So, you know, 43K fails, 39K is support. Uh, there were a lot of buy orders at 39K, so it looks like they're going to get filled, right? And if they do get filled, then the real support is at 35K, all right? So, you know, I think it's reasonable to expect Bitcoin to hold 35K. And if there is a mess in crypto, it will regrettably be in altcoins. Now, just as a notation, if Bitcoin does not hold 35K, then you're probably looking at either 26K uh, or something in that neighborhood, right? That's if it's a Black Monday. And it's, you know, 10% down in equities and God knows what in crypto, right? But 35K in Bitcoin should hold. That may be the place to play it for a bounce if there's no debacle on Monday, right? In other words, if Monday is just a mini, oh my God, 35K is probably the place to put stable coins to work for a trade that hopefully lasts more than an hour, not investment advice. Okay. The bottom line is I know it looks like it's down a lot today, but it isn't. It really isn't, especially if you look at this chart. Okay. Ethereum. Now, Ethereum has not traded well, obviously. 2750 is support. The bigger support is in the zone between 2600 and 2440. 2440 was where ETH, that was like the, the first dip you got after bottom. And, you know, the high before the give up trade was at 2,600. So in that zone is where ETH has just got to hold. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, honestly, if total crypto market cap goes down, especially with all the competitors that ETH has, I hate to say this, but it's probably going to be ETH that gets wrecked if the market goes down, right? If Bitcoin goes underneath 35K, or even hits 35k. I I don't I don't even know if the 2440 level in ETH holds. Now, that said, if 2440 in ETH holds, it's probably a buy, right? But we got to maintain support and you got to know where support is, particularly if you're trading altcoins or if you've got to make position adjustments before gas fees get out of control. All right? Okay. Cosmos, uh, Cosmos, it, it hasn't paid to get long at 42. I noted that yesterday, even though we were pounding the table on our bullish case, support in Cosmos is at 32, all right? That's the 100-day moving average. That's also the prior high from May, right? So if Cosmos goes down, it'll probably go to 32. There's an outside chance of 28, all right? Cosmos, in the event of a debacle, Medi was right yesterday when he said, you know, realistically, Cosmos is probably something that you dollar cost average into. Meaning if it goes down and it continues to go down, not investment advice, but it's something that you could accumulate for a long-term model. Okay, short-term supports at 32. You're in finance, stopped out and embarrassed. So if you think you're the only one out there, I, I know it feels like you're the only one out there, but you're not. I'm on TV getting wrecked, okay? So your finance turned out to be a diamond and it broke out in the wrong direction. 
Now, is urine finance eventually going to get discovered as the place in crypto to go to get a decent yield? Yes. Is that going to happen today? Probably not. Okay. FTX, I think this is the next Binance coin, meaning the thing that can actually rally in a bear market. I actually do expect people to buy dips. The only question is what dip? Is it a dip to 40 uh, where they had this sort of like liquidation zone or liquidity event? Okay. Or is it a deeper, right? I'm kind of hoping, kind of hoping that you see FTX hold 40, even with the rest of the market possibly falling. I do think there are going to be dip buyers in urine and FTX if the market goes down. Okay. AVAX. God, what to do with this thing, right? This thing used to be like the stud of all time. Now it just sort of like bleeds. So 74 is support. So if the Fed saves the market tomorrow, AVAX is a great buy right now, not investment advice. Now, if it's a mess and everybody gets washed out of this, 64 and 48 are the big support points underneath the market. All right. You're right. Crypto crazy says hopium. Yes. 74 is the hopium level, right? 64 and 48, you jot down or when you watch the video in case it's a mess on Monday. Okay, let's talk about Phantom. Let's get real. So somebody on the stream yesterday, okay, just to show you that, you know, not only do I try to give you the smartest analysis possible, but there's a lot of people out there watching the stream who help me by commenting. So we have possibly a complex head and shoulders top in phantom. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means phantom could go down. It could, right? Now, this formation is, you know, outside the box. So phantom could go to, to $2.02 or it can go to $1.40. Okay, do I think phantom is crash proof? Probably not right? It did not pay to FOMO into Phantom on three trips to like 340. Okay. So if everybody decides to take profits all at once, I'm not hating on Phantom, but I think the idea that headed into next week that you can find cryptos that you'll be safe in, I think that needs to be reevaluated. You need to go back to, I only want good projects at good entry points. If you've been hodling and you're wondering if you should get money off the table, not investment advice. All I can tell you is the best investment strategy is the one that helps you sleep at night. Okay. Solana, 132 was support. Okay. Um, Andreas is asking, is it safe to use the token metrics daily indices or should I wait until the market stabilizes? Well, folks, I can't uh, give you investment advice. But I would say before getting long, I would want to see the market stabilize and at least bounce, right? Or at least look like it's going to bounce. So, you know, uh, careful with buying the dip, right? You, you don't want to buy the dip. You want to buy the puke, right? You want to buy it when people are not afraid to be short. Now, speaking of that, Solana is tricky. Solana has been bleeding now since November. So... Support was at 132. That didn't hold. The target of the head and shoulders top, which was probably the biggest warning signal for this whole market back in December. The target of that pattern's at 109. And there's obvious support at an even number of 100. VCs have got heavy bags here, right? And I shudder to think what happens if this market really cracks. Because again, Solana has been underperforming for a while. Now that said, hopefully a hundred holds because Solana has been underperforming for a while. You know, 100 is your pivot. If it's above hundred, it's okay. If it goes below hundred, it could wick down, come back, retest 100, and then you make a decision, right? That, that's what I think is going to happen in Solana. There could be this like, oh my God, stop loss event below hundred. And then after that happens, you reevaluate what to do next. Polk it up. Okay, there's support at 20. Polkadot has just got me crying in my beer, right? Along with everyone else, right? The layer zero play is Cosmos. That's it for the moment, right? Support and Polkadot's at 20. And if support doesn't hold the 20, 
then I don't know. It's just like, it's, it's kind of like bearish price discovery. Okay. Chain link. Oh, chain link. Right. I got, I, I, I got greedy. You know, I, I had it go up. Don't worry. I'm going to get to helium. Right. Chain link goes up. I think I got a breakout. I want to buy the dip and I get smoked. Right. Chain link supports at 19. I'm kind of hoping that, you know, it's like fingers crossed that that holds at least for today. Chain link is below 19 on Monday. There's a problem. If chain link is above 19 on Monday, there's some hope that at least crypto can hang in there until they get their act together in legacy. Okay. Rune, just for the sake of eating humble pie on the air. Okay. I'm stopped. I wanted to break out above six. I thought support was at 535. And basically, two hours after I said, you know, I don't want to sell support, support gave out. So if you've been wrong, I was wrong. Okay. Near. Everyone's talking about near, right? Uh, support's at 1350. Support is also at 1275. Now, if you were a pure crypto person and you were like, you know what? I don't give a shit what's going on legacy. I want good projects at good entry points. So if 1350 or 1275 looks like a, de a deal to you in near, I don't think I'd necessarily blame you for getting involved. However, be, keep in mind that there's probably a lot of people who discovered this late. So do I think anybody is safe in anything? No. But if you're a crypto purist, I mean, Jesus, this was at 20. And if they take it down to 12, okay, well, you know, take a look at it, right? But you have to evaluate this on Monday. Like, for example, if Bitcoin winds up at 35K, you know, near is worth a look. Probably Phantom 2 and all these other coins. All these layer ones are worth a look if Bitcoin goes to 35K, okay? But if Bitcoin doesn't go to 35K, then you can trade near's chart on its own i think luna okay i believe i said you know don't get involved above 84 because of resistance then luna turns around and came off so that's one i got right you know don't fomo into anything right if anything it's fear of being short okay support in luna in the event of a problem is somewhere between 61 and 54 and I'm guessing that would be a juicy buy, not investment advice. Okay, Elrond, I know we got a lot of people asking about that from time to time. 160 is support. Okay, if that gives out, I'm looking at 124 as a GAN level below that. Yes, DYDX and PERP are trading well because hedging pressure is coming in through those decentralized exchanges. If people need to protect themselves and get short, that is one of the best ways to do it. Now let's talk about the metaverse and NFTs. Our NFT analyst has discovered, okay, that protocols are coming out that will allow you to get short NFTs. Okay, those protocols are coming. We've also been informed that Decentraland is essentially a gigantic parking lot. All the land is bought, but there's not been as much development as Decentraland was like. So there's support in Decentraland at 216. And as much as it pains me to say it, you have to be really careful in metaverse trades, right? If there's a crash Monday, okay? 216 is the level I would work off. So if the central land holds 216, the market's okay. Metaverse market. The central land is not above 216. The metaverse is not okay. I don't have the chart up, but if you look at RNDR, that's what MultiCoin and a lot of these VCs were able to invest in at 30 cents, even though the market was like 50 X above where they invested recently. And R and DR has done nothing but go down. Right. They got, they gave R and DR capital and dumped the coins on the market. So be careful. Gala games thought 25 cents was going to be support, right? Wrong. Okay. Got to be careful because Gala games unwound a large portion of its rally. So all I'm saying is, if you got metaverse coins, make sure you just manage your risk. You want to hodl them long term, okay, right? Just make sure your positions are something you're comfortable with. All right. Now, Pax Gold. No one wants to talk about gold. 
except for the one guy I know who's been talking about gold for two years, sitting there in pain, watching Bitcoin and crypto move. Pax Gold, not investment advice, may break out close to the apex of a triangle. Now, if you have a massive crash in everything, gold may get hit too. The gold is actually holding up very well. And I would anticipate if there's a loss of confidence in the system, that was if the Fed does or does not save the market, honestly, gold can go higher. Gold actually may go up more if the Fed comes in and goes, oh, wait a minute, we're not going to do as much as we said. Okay, so gold, in my opinion, not investment advice, is a possible hedge. Silver is doing a pause that refreshes on top of a trend line. Silver has been moon is moon has been mooning after a give up trade that was that was as near back as like five or ten days ago, right? The give up trade in silver was going on like three days ago, and then all of a sudden they ungave up and turned around and went up. Okay, sushi. Now, just in case, like I said, you're feeling bad, you're wrecked, right? Like, this is the one that makes me want to cry. I was like, if sushi goes above 662, let's go and let's pile in for 10. It stopped at 662, stopped me and everyone else out. And it's just like, I don't know, it's back in like give up zone territory. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, I can't believe it. That's the crypto bull market equivalent of fear of being short. If you told me I got to get short sushi at 558, I'd be like, you're crazy. I'm not doing it. Okay. Fear of being short feeds a bear market, right? Like fear of, I can't sell it. I don't want to sell. Okay. Or I can't possibly sell any of that talk in your head is dangerous. That's basically saying, I want the Fed to save me. And if the Fed doesn't save you, then what happens next? Okay. And that is the market update. Okay, let's kill this. I can see comments going bonkers. Let me get my chart program pulled up here. Okay, wrong again. C says, stop feeding the bears. I agree. All right. <laughs> so let's see what's going on here in the comments. Okay, somebody thinks man is going to 175. Vulcan forged. Okay. I will make sure I take a look at that. Let's see what else we got going on. Somebody asking for flow. Chill Money says we can prosper. You can. All right. Somebody asking for Casper. I know we have Casper fans. Jersey Channel Islands in the house. Cardano request. Okay. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. All right. DYDX and Perp writing it down. See where we can welcome people from while the chart program's coming up. Okay, Megan said near killed me. I I feel you. I feel you out there trying to help everybody out as best as I can. All right. So let's get to the chart program and let's get busy. Okay, let me share the screen here. Okay, actually, you know what? Here, here's the list. Crow, Dopex, Engine Coin, Rune, which I covered, Helium, SYS, and VeChain. All right, let me get let me get this going here. Let's get it shared. And I'll stay with you and we'll get you what you need. Whoops. All right. So let's take a look at this. See where we're at. Let's, all right. Let's get helium going because I saw that flashing by multiple times. All right. It's coming up, people. It's coming up. Stay with me. By the way, if you like the content, right, please hit the like button. That helps us get the word out to anybody else out there who might be suffering. Okay, so Helium, 29.18 was support. That's right here, okay? Keeping it really simple, right? The best support in Helium most likely is right here, okay? At 26.39, the
That was the prior high from back in August, right there. Okay. So 2639, let me get it on the screen for anybody who's watching the video later for helium. 2639 is an important level. Okay. Let's try to see if we can get the Vulcan forged because I see that up here as well. Okay. Here comes Vulcan forged. All right, so on the GAN lines that I drew, it took out, it took out, say, I don't know, what is this, like 12? Okay, the whole rally started, all right, from right about this level, right? So this thing went, you know, volcano right from around the 10 area, okay? I would imagine the last, the last, Ditch support is 935 in Vulcan. In other words, if Vulcan holds 935, you can hang on. If Vulcan is below 935, then you're probably looking at a give up trade, right? You're looking at everybody just quit. In other words, I, I actually think that's what you're looking at right here. Like when you have this thing down like this four days in a row, that's a give up trade. That's actually the opposite of this moon event, right? In other words, anybody who owned this, who, who, who like aped in, right? And they made money, right? But if they didn't take it, they're the ones who are giving up here, okay? Okay, let's get dope X up here. Let me see if I can get that. I'm gonna have to go to a different chart program for that. So I'll come back to it. I know I, we had engine coin People were asking for engine coin. Let's see what we can get there. Okay, engine coin. All right, so the good news is engine coin has got support. Has got support right here at $1.85. Okay, that's where the whole rally took off from right here. Okay. So engine coin is also in give up mode, right? That's a give up trade. How far does that give up trade go? I mean, is today it? Is it black Monday? I don't know. But if I had engine coin, right? Support is right here. Now, of course, like yesterday, I can say support is here at, you know, noon central standard time. And that can change by two o'clock. It can be a bounce because the Fed comes in or it can just be everyone in equities goes, I give up. But engine coin is at support. You just have to keep in mind that with some of these metaverse coins in a give up trade, there can be wicks down below support. Okay. There can be wicks down below support. Feet chain army is out there probably suffering. I know, right? Okay. Let's see what we can get for V chain. Okay, again, you know, I, I thought I knew where support was in VeChain. And realistically, it's probably at the old low, which is 0.057, right? So again, in VeChain, you know, you've got a give up trade happening as we speak, right? I mean, this, this is just flat out. I mean, if you zoom out here, right? When you see this down, down, down every day, this is people giving up, right? So there could be a wick down below 0.057 or if 39K holds or 35K holds in Bitcoin, you know, VeChain can wick down, right? But what you don't want to do is catch a falling knife if you're not on support, right? There's good projects at good entry points like 35K in Bitcoin, right? But you got to ask yourself, if Bitcoin's at 35K, where's the rest of the market, all right? So you have to adjust your position. This, is go this goes for everybody, right? This goes for Engine, uh, you know, Vulcan, you know, Rune, et cetera, right? Helium, if you have to adjust your position, charts are important. Support is important, okay? Your sanity is much more important because you don't want to be rage quitting crypto in January when there's going to be a better day later on this year, 
I mean, folks, again, when this is all over, right, when legacy is done doing whatever the F it's going to do, and central banks are done doing whatever the F they're going to do, right, crypto is going to be a part of what I call a psychological renaissance. In other words, I, I'm, I want to have a whole video about the idea of one day after ARK and all these other things in, in legacy get done doing whatever they're going to do, right? Whether it's, you know, a bounce up and then down or whatever it is, people are going to say, oh yeah, you know what? I'm done with legacy. I want to go to crypto. It's not going to be a correlation decoupling. It's going to be a psychological decoupling because one day when it's all lower and when everybody gives up, crypto is going to rise from the ashes before legacy, way before legacy, right? And can go a lot higher. Now, that's later. You got to manage risk now. You got to ask yourself, if VeChain goes to four cents, can I tolerate that? Okay. All right. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. SYS. See if we did that or not. Okay. Hopefully, I got the right symbol here. Okay. SYS, a critical component of Web 3.0. So I have looked at this before and it's actually holding up nicely. Right. And the big question is, is this immune from any type of decline? Well, I don't know. I see big wicks at this level. So if there's a good project at a good entry point, that's probably it right there. So it's like, I like it, but you may wind up getting it at say, I don't know. 93 cents if there's a, a big mess. I mean, I guess it can break out if the market goes up a lot, but you want to stay focused on this good projects at good entry points theme, right? Maybe it's actually, yeah, it's probably like 95, 96 cents for SYS, okay? Helium, we already covered. Oh, yes, Cardano. Can't forget Cardano. Okay, Cardano was looking good for a while, right? For like two days, and then it totally blew up, right? So this is a, a clean look at Cardano. Let me see if I can get the chart that I was drawn on up. Okay, here comes Cardano. You know, again, with this, so this is Cardano here, and this is the concept of the failed rally, right? Okay, not, not just the failed rally, but the deadly failed rally, right? You got a failed rally here, you got a failed rally here, and then this was particularly ugly, right? So, unfortunately, even though I thought Cardano was turning around, you can't discount a give up trade from where the whole rally started or the whole second leg of the, yeah, the whole big rally started from like a dollar. So with Cardano, I would say you've got wick risk. Matter of fact, in layer ones, that's probably what you have. You have this risk that just everything just wicks lower. Okay. All right. Casper, don't want to forget that. Okay. Okay, so Casper, oh my God. Okay, what you're seeing, what you're watching is the difficulty that technical analysts have in finding support in a market that is in like, I, I don't care mode, right? So Casper, let's go to like a longer term time frame, like three days. Okay, so Casper is inside this huge square formation, right? And then it does this, right? You know what I'm saying? It, it's like, it, it's like people are panicking. Now, should they be panicking in Casper? Eh, probably not. But again, where is Casper if it's breaking out of this formation and Bitcoin's at 35K, right? Is this less about charts and more about crypto therapy? And if anybody remembers that from the Sunday live stream, right? 
crypto therapy, right? Can you tolerate what could happen to Casper? Yeah, this is so beat up and destroyed. It's hard to believe that they can destroy it more. But if it doesn't respect support, then I have to basically tell you it's not respecting support. And it doesn't make sense to catch a falling knife unless you've got an incredible entry point or bears have just, you know, or you, bulls rather have just completely capitulated. Okay. Just learning wants an entry point for helium. I think we covered that. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to RMRK. Okay, again, a, another metaverse play. Okay. You know, some painful metaverse action here, looking at a daily chart, right? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at 12, right? Assuming anyone cares about support, again, when you see this like down, 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 I mean, let's just go to a four hour chart of this, right? In other words, you have to ask yourself, it isn't necessarily about support unless you're looking at stuff like Bitcoin, right? Or Ethereum. So if this is RMRK, you know, this could be give up trade right here because look what happened, right? If you, if you dissect this, right? And you see, you know, at 21, right? That was the old low or 20. So it tries to get back to 20, like just now, like just now it tries to go back to 20 and gets rejected. So if RMRK, let's put the label up here so people can get, if RMRK cannot recover above 20, then you have to ask yourself, how do I manage risk from here? If RMRK, right, if this is the give up trade or the liquidity event and it's back above 20, right, imagining that there is a world where either the Fed saves the day or equities get it together or, you know, there's no debacle, this is the debacle right? But you got to see something here in these metaverse coins where it's like, okay, the bulls are back in charge because if the bulls are not back in charge, this information that we got that the decentralized metaverse is a parking lot and, and Microsoft just bought all the 3d animation talent by buying Activision, right? Because if you're out there asking yourself, why the fuck is the metaverse trading like this? I thought the metaverse was going to be like the next thing. Yeah, it was until Silicon Valley got involved and everybody started taking over everybody else to get the 3D animation talent. That was the risk to the decentralized metaverse. And that is currently being traded. And that may actually spill over to NFTs, which I thought would hold their value. They probably will until somebody comes in and figures out how to short them. Right now, our will hold up better than stocks, I think, assuming you know what art is, right? Now, RMRK was a metaverse growth token. So that little mini rant aside, you've got to see bulls technical, technical analysis evidence that bulls are in charge. Okay, harmony. All right. Yes, people talk in harmony. Folks, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, you know, if for no other reason, uh, if you think this content is valuable or you think that there are other people, your, your crypto brothers and sisters that might benefit from analysis like this, hitting the like button actually or subscribing actually helps me get the message out to everybody else. Right? Other people who need help like you do, then, you know, hit the like button. So the algorithm will get it out there. Okay. So, you know, smart contracts, you know, you think, you know, what's going on, you think it's good, but you know, it hits resistance and then everybody takes profits all at once. Right. I mean, you have to ask yourself the last time that people said, F it, I'm out, you know, harmony went from 27 down to 15. Okay. In August, Harmony went from 18 to 4 cents, okay? Now, I know it's tough. It's tough because you're like, I can't sell 
because it's already down so much. You're like, wait a minute. You mean this thing was this thing was at what 37 on the 14th? And now I gotta I, I might have to like think about risk management at 23. Well, you know, puking something when it's down is tough to do. And I'm not telling you to sell a good, I'm not telling you to sell. I'm not giving you investment advice. I'll give you a tactical support point in Harmony, which is probably right there. Okay. So there's good support in Harmony in this 23 cent area. So that's support, right? You have to ask yourself, okay, if support holds, maybe I can hodl. If 39K holds in Bitcoin, maybe I'm okay. If 39K does not hold in Bitcoin and Bitcoin goes to 35K, where is this going to be? Right? Now, I can't be there with you. Once I sign off the air, the only thing that's left is the echo of my Jersey accent in your ear. That's it. You can go back and watch the videos, but the video is good as of now. Right? It's not good as of who the, who the F knows, right? Saturday night, Sunday, whenever they want to do, whatever they're going to do this weekend and Monday. All right? Let's see what else we got out there. Okay, somebody, somebody, I actually saw a cake. Let's try cake. Okay, someone's asking for BTC information. Well, I pull that up. Okay. Um, Bitcoin, 39K is support. If 39K doesn't hold the, big, the bigger support and more likely the place that you would buy not investment advice for a major bounce is 35k right and the question is where is your altcoin position going to be at 35k okay so this is cake right and we're watching this and like everything else in altcoins i got to go to a four hour chart to get some perspective right because it just looks like everyone is giving up right you see this wick down when you see these wicks down, that's fear of being short and liquidation. Then K comes back up, okay? It comes back up, it tries to make it, and it fails. So it's a give up trade, it's fear of being short, and a rally that fails all at the same time. Like you could be in a bear market, you could have three things going on in a bear market in one candy. Right? That's how sick bear markets are. So if anybody who thinks bear markets are good, it's called a bear market for a reason. All right. Liverpool, much love to you. Oh my God. I forgot about DYDX. Put this up 15%. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. DYDX. So I gotta be honest with you. Let's take a let's take a moment to ask yourself, all right, is this the sequel to Uniswap, right? This was an airdrop, right? This was an airdrop. And realistically, the first trading that happened in this airdrop probably was around 10, right? That's where people started to grab it on dips, right? It's not a bull market unless you can buy a dip. So I'm guessing DYDX is going to test 10.5. Now, one thing I wanted to let you know is that both, it wasn't DYDX at the time, but PERP, during the last bear market, actually held up, did not go down, and eventually went up. Last, last time in July, because I know, because I was stuck with it, I had it staked, PERP went from nine to three, right? I gained like seven pounds watching that. Then it turned around and went from like three to 16. Okay, so these decentralized derivatives exchanges, I don't know that you want to FOMO into anything, but if you can't control yourself and you got to get involved in something, uh, you know, these things are going to do well if the market blows up, right? Because everybody has got to come in and hedge, right? Perp has actually held up. You got people selling the uptick here, okay? I, 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 I don't know because I'm not a technology guy which exchange is better, but this is what I do know in Perp. I know that when you have a downward sloping wedge like this, this is bears trying to push it down. It's like taking a basketball or a soccer ball or a football and trying to push it down underneath the water in a pool. 
right? That inflated ball, you got to really push it down. But when you let go, the, the, the ball pops to the surface and pops back out again. So the fact that Perp is actually giving you a dip to get involved, I mean, you know, like if you showed me, if you said, okay, Bill, take a look at this chart and say, all right, how does this look? I said, well, you know, it stopped at resistance, right? So this is Perp 89 minute. It stopped at resistance, right? But look, what, look what's happening, right? If you draw the FIP retracement on this, Right, it's coming back, and there's buyers at the 38% retracement level around 919. Right, there are buyers on dips in this token. So, I think you should go out and put the rent money in one of these tokens. No, but I do think if the market goes down, right, tokens that may hold up or that may recover the fastest, right, maybe that's the way to do it. Right, in other words, if there is a flush lower. The thing that might recover the fastest is perp. Right now, it looks like, you know, people are getting out going, wow, this thing's at eight. The market went down. Now it's at 9.6. Let me take my money. All right. So, you know, I understand decentralized derivative exchanges are going to do well relative to the rest of the market. Okay. But FOMO is not something I'd be doing, at least not until you see whether or not the bulls are in charge on Monday. All right, let's take one last coin. Let me make sure I got like, you know, the stuff people were screaming for, IMX. Okay, pulling the chart up here. Ouch. Okay, let me see if I can get some better history. If anybody's got... More data on this. Stay with me. I'm pulling it up. Pulling it up. All right. Let's see what I got here. All right, folks. Don't forget to hit the like button. <laughs> don't forget. Okay. So this is kind of the opposite of what's going on in DX, right? So you've got this huge air pocket here. Right, this thing came out, it went up, okay, and you're in the air pocket zone, right? And right here, it seems to be failing. So, you know, unless you're willing, you know, if you're long term hodling this, that's fine. But again, on an 89 minute chart, look at this candle, right? Everybody is selling. And you think it's over, right? Wrong. Okay. In other words, everyone's like, okay, this is bull. Bear markets do this. Okay. It's over. It's like, I, it's happened to me yesterday. It's like, okay, you know, it's time to move to cash. It's time to move the stable coins, time to buy gold. But I was like, oh, wow. Look at this FTX chart. Ooh. Got sucked in on that. Okay. So, all right, folks, let me, uh, Let's bring Bitcoin up here. Let's just check where the market is in general. Let's check where the market is in general while I'm talking. So my final words can be somewhat reflective of reality. All right. So as we leave, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, Ethereum's down 7%. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's quite a battle going on right here. Right. There's a big battle going on at 2,700. This is a new thing I'm going to try. So I'm going to try to leave the stream with some relevant tactical information. You know, so if everything blows up when I'm getting done talking and twice and I'm sick of, all right, I want you guys to have the best guidance possible that lasts as long as possible. So, you know, 2,800, 2,700 is holding because of the fear of being short, right? That's just, people are just like, okay, you know what? I can't sell ETH down here, okay? But I'm just going to remind you, somebody is selling ETH down here, right? Oops, this got messed up, okay? Somebody is unloading, right? In other words, they got one green candle here, and then somebody came in and was like, eh, I need to unload, right? Bear markets do this, 
I, I don't want to sell it at 2700 but at 2850 uh, I'll get out because I, I, I'm afraid of what happens on Monday or I have to hedge. So you have to remember, folks, here's the parting line. If DYDX and PERP are doing well, that's because people are selling. They're selling derivatives. They're hedging. So if you see DYDX and PERP going up or improving, that's a sign that hedging pressure is flooding into the market. Okay. All right, folks, that's the market update. You're going to have to survive until Monday. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have a uh, KNC and compound. So a little overtime here, a little bonus round. Don't want to leave anybody hanging, especially people who are in the comments, hitting the like button. We appreciate y'all. All right. So let's see what we got here for compound. Got to go to a higher time frame chart. Okay. So compound. Wow. Man, I tell you what, if you are in the wrong place in DeFi, I saw this take off when this rally, the whole rally first started. Okay. I would say that the support in compound is around 22. Okay. That's where compounds just absolutely got a hold. Right. Got a hold there. Okay. Let's go back. Let's see if I can find it on Coinbase. I, I want to say that's where it launched. Okay. So here's compound on Coinbase. Okay. Yeah. Definitely have support. Oh, that is not compound. That's Luna. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Trying to find compound again. All right, 132 is support, okay? If compound is not holding 132, then, you know, you have the old lows at 100, right? So you got 132 in an even number. It's kind of like Solana, right? Okay, charm. Let me see if I can get that up. I don't know if I have that on this system. No, I don't have charm. All right, KNC. Okay, so this on a weekly basis looks like it's trying to hold up. Okay, assuming I've got the right coin here and the right symbol. So not a lot is happening here. It's around $1.50. Again, that assumes I've got the right symbol. Let me just check to make sure. Yeah, I mean it's it's like a, not a, not a lot going on, not not a lot going on. Um, all right, L let me let me try one more thing. So let me stop this screen share. And I know that we've got a lot, a lot of people who are asking for OPEX, right? Oh, a lot of people who are asking for DOPEX. and I'm going to try to see if I can get that pulled up. So while I do that. Let me just remind everybody what I've been saying early on. The most important thing to remember here is your sanity. Okay. In a bear market, it's tough to read the charts. It's tough to predict everything. It's tough to know what to do, especially when you're upset. Okay. It is. The most important thing you can do is manage your sanity. All right, let me see. I, I have dope X here. I know the suspense is killing you probably. You may have given up on me already. Hopefully not. Let me see if I can pull this up here and we can get you some dope X. Now, on this chart, Jesus. Okay, so this is actually taking out support, right? 
there, there was a prior high back in October. Now, the good news is, okay, there's a pretty decent candle right there around, say, 2000, if I've got the right thing. This says USD calculated, right? So the bottom line with this is it broke. The, the old ceiling wasn't the floor. It wasn't the floor, okay? All right. Okay, friends, that's going to be a wrap for today. Really appreciate you coming in. Let's try to say goodbye to anybody who's out there. All right. I definitely appreciate everything that everyone was, was doing today on the stream. We appreciate your participation. Tokenmetrics customers, we appreciate your business. Okay. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong. Okay. The most important thing to do is manage risk and get your portfolio where you can sleep at night. This is Bill Noble from Token Metrics. I will see you on Monday.